One of the nicest things about eBay is that you can buy industrial control modules from China that are presumably used in the Chinese factories. And in this case, uh, this one came from a supplier called Industry Understroke Mall, and they just seem to do industrial components. It's, it's really good. So this module, this fully enclosed module, uh, cost £3.61, which is absolute buttons. You think, if I was buying just a replacement thermistor, you know, in the UK, that's, you, you, I'd be paying a lot more than that usually um, for something like that. But um, here we have a completely enclosed module. It takes 12 volts in. The output, it's not a set of volt-free contacts. It is actually 12 volt comes straight back out. And if you've got a higher load, I mean, this supposedly says you can switch 10 amps with it, but I never trust those little relays. I'm guessing it's going to be a Songo relay inside. It usually is a Songo relay. It's one of the most common brands in China, although you just never know what's going to be a copy and what's not. Um, I should mention uh, the display here looks a bit uneven on the camera, but to me it looks pretty even. There is, it, they're obviously sort of cutting back in the circuitry for the multiplex and just use a minimum number of resistors, but it, it achieves the function that's required. Uh, but the volt-free contact here, well the, the, in this case it's not a volt-free contact, the 12 volt output through the relay could then be used either to drive a load directly or uh, if you wanted to switch a heating load or something you could then drive a relay or even a solid state relay with it. The module just has two buttons, and you can use it for heating or cooling, and it's very simple. If you press the left-hand button, that's the start temperature. In this case, it's by its default, as it comes, is 25 degrees Celsius. If you press the right button, that's the end button, uh, end temperature, and it's 40 degrees Celsius is the, the factory default. default. So let's uh, make set an example here. Say, for instance, I wanted to use this to cool. So the temperature I'd want it for on, you press it, uh, should I say, you press and hold until it starts flashing, and then you can use the up down arrows. So I'm going to reduce that to 22. If you hold it, it fast forwards. Oh, a bit too much. And the that's the start temperature, 22, uh, and I want it to go off if it's cooling at about 20. So I press the right hand button, the off button, until it starts flashing and then I can then use the down button to actually take it right down to about 20. Clicky, clicky, clicky. And after a while it stops blinking, goes back to the temperature and it does store that non-volatile memory. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to turn the power off. It's gone off. Turn it back on. And once it's initialised, it's going to turn on at 22 degrees centigrade and off at 20. So at the moment, it's uh, too cold for it to turn on the cooling, so I'm going to heat it up with my hand. And as soon as it gets up to 22, you'll see the little light come on, and this light will come on too, because I put a light on it to actually show that. So there we go. It's up to... Uh, it's up above 22, so effectively it's turned on the cooling. This could be running a fan, or it could be running a refrigeration unit or just operating a solenoid valve to actually allow a refrigeration plant to operate. And as the temperature comes back down, obviously it's going to st turn off when it reaches the target of 20 again. And the fact you can set the on and off temperature independently means that you can set a hysteresis. In this case, I set a hysteresis of 2 degrees. So now, supposing you wanted to make it a heat, set it to heat instead of cool, all you'd do is you'd select that one, and say you wanted to come on at... Um, 20 um, and then you wanted it to go off or wait till it stops flashing at 22 Oop. put it into blinky mode Okay, so now it's cold, so it wants heat. So now I'm going to apply the heat, and as soon as it gets uh, above 22, it cuts out. And likewise, when it cools down, which I shall cool it down with this frosty beverage, when it gets down to about 20, it will cut back in again. Very simple to operate. Very simple indeed. 
Um, if you wanted to restore it to its factory default setting values, uh, to be honest, I don't think that's about all the parameters I can find that you can set. But um, if you press and hold both buttons simultaneously until it goes 888, it does this, the display test, and then it defaults to 25 on and 40 off. Um, so that would be for heating, um, and it would heat up to 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, so let's open it up. Let's take a look inside and see what the, the construction quality is like. Spudger. Ooh. Ooh, anti-tracking slots. I wonder if it's designed for multiple voltages. How does this come out? I can see a little tang, a little plastic lug there, but it's not matched. Oh, what, there's screws. Out comes that screw, and out comes that screw. Is this going to come out easily? Okay. So, the really, it's got modest spacing. They've they've put anti tracking wherever tracks come close to each other. The other tracks are actually quite well spaced from each other. And it has an anti-tracking anti -tra anti anti slot. See, that's when I, I... I'm thinking of the next word, slot, and that's when I mix the letters up. It's a bit of a spoonerism, I think. Uh, yeah, I wonder if this is also designed to be adaptable for mains voltage. It is a songo, really. It's the little chip is a... It's an ST chip. 8S003F3PL or 6 actually. Yeah, just a generic, looks like a generic little microcontroller they've used. So, what have we got in the input? We've got uh, a voltage regulator. Oh, hold on, let's see what the voltage regulator is, see what the circuitry is operating at. EMS1117, 5 volt. Really, it's pretty much textbook. There's not an awful lot to say about it at all. It's got the transistor that switches the relay. It's got the little back EMF spike suppressor on the relay coil. And that's it. One red LED to show when the output's on. Uh, the digital readout. I'm looking at this and I'm only seeing three resistors, maybe one per digit. To, that really cuts down the cost, doesn't it? Uh, does it di display if there's a problem with the temperature sensor? Let's uh, power it up again to actually see if it displays a problem if the uh, thermistor it gets disconnected. So this will be at its default settings because I did reset it. Uh, what happens if the thermistor is unplugged? Displays LLL. And if it's shorted out, I guess it'll display high, high, high. H, H, H? Yes, it does. It does, however, leave the output on. Hmm. I'd rather it didn't. I'd rather it killed the output if uh, it detected an anomaly like that, a probe fault. This is why you should always add a little, one extra stage of protection, like a, a thermostat that will kill power to everything if, you know, uh, something, the control system fails, a sort of last resort thermal cutout. I'm also looking at this uh, arrangement here. I wonder if that's designed for dropper resistors, or it might even be it's designed to take a capacitive dropper in some way, or possibly just resistors. What is the quiescent current when it's off? Let's uh, change the temperature to... Uh, what am I going to change it to? Let's lower it completely. Quiescent current, when it's off, is 22 milliamps. That's not much at all. Uh, so it's a neat little unit. Um, very functional. Quite a nice little toy. Um, I could imagine this being built, because of the nature of the box, I could imagine it being built inside a panel instead of being somewhere that people can actually mess about the buttons on it. 
Although, then again, for low voltage applications, it's not that critical. Um, so the only niggle I've got is that fact that if the this probe gets damaged, it, it seems to leave it in whatever state it was in. Does that? Uh, would it? It wouldn't turn it on, would it? I think it just locks in the last state. That's that's a bit disappointing. Oh, it actually does turn it on if it gets shorted out. Hmm, that's not good, is it? That's what you might call a little software weakness. I would have thought that routine that displays the HHH or the LLL would also just kill the, the relay. But yeah, it's quite nice. I could see this being mounted inside a panel, you know, where you didn't want people messing with the buttons. Something to control a fixed temperature of something that the engineering department, you know, can program inside the panel, close the panel up, and it'll just sit there and do its job in the background. But yeah, it's quite a neat little unit. I'm guessing that this uh, probe is probably going to be the uh, 10K probe. That's one of the most common. The 10k probes, I think it's 25 degrees Celsius it's based on. Uh, let's bring the meter in. And it's just basically, they describe the probe resistance as what it will be at that temperature. So it's a bit lower than uh, that at the moment. But it'll be in the region of 15. It's going to go down a bit as I heat it up. Yeah, as that heats up, probably my hand will go right up to about... Um, 30. So yeah, it probably is a, just a standard, it looks like it is a standard just 10k thermistor. Yep. So yeah, nice little unit. I like that. Very cheap, a nice little sort of electronic Lego module that could find lots of interesting, albeit non-critical applications given that slight weakness. But yeah, I like that.